Right, uh, well, everyone uh, seems to be uh, joining now, um, so uh, let's get underway. Uh, kind of David's waiting to start. So um, I think, again, looking down the list of names, uh, it's, all, it, it's, it's all the likely culprits, so I, I won't bore you by going through all the helpful hints and everything um, again, just to say, um, as usual, the mics are muted by default, and uh, if for any reason the uh, opportunity to switch your mic on does come, uh, if you could just keep it uh, muted, that would be brilliant, thanks. Um, just so that uh, we don't have any strange noises and things in the background, that would be brilliant. Um, uh, also, um, just to say again, uh, many apologies from us, but we've had to cancel the session on Monday. Um, as, a, as I kind of said at the end of, uh, at the end of the thing, at the end of the session yesterday, uh, sadly, um, Eleanor and the teams in AI team uh, who were going to tell us all about um, how they came up with their ideas for the Teams and AI competition. Uh, sadly, they were told at the last minute they had to do exams instead uh, on Monday afternoon. So unfortunately, uh, that session is cancelled. What, what, we, what we're doing, though, is that we are going to be here between two and three again on Monday. Uh, we'll open up the portal, and if you do want to chat there, then um, please do feel free. Uh, there won't be the kind of IoT experts like um, David and Ollie um, available on the Monday, but um, Michael and I uh, will be here. Um, Patricia might be able to be here a bit as well, and we can try to um, answer what any que any questions you've got. Uh, meanwhile, a better way for you to reach us before, of course, our big uh, community discussion on Wednesday, when we will have makers available uh, to, for you to ask questions to, uh, meanwhile, we thought what we'd do is we've opened up on our Sarah Slack uh, workspace, uh, we've actually opened up a channel, an environment um, making challenge channel on there. And you're, you're please more than welcome uh, to go in there and uh, chat, you know, chat with each other. And, uh, and we will, we'll of course, be able to see what you're saying in there. And if there's anything um, anyone really needs um, answering, we'll hopefully be able to do it. Um, so um, we'll start any second now. Um, David has asked um, if we could keep our questions uh, to the end today. Uh, he's got a lot to get through, and um, he's going to leave uh, 10 to 15 minutes at the end. So please do feel free then uh, to, to ask questions then and save your questions to then. If anyone's got kind of any bad, pro you know, if, if anyone really needs to kind of interrupt before then, do just let us know on chat though, and we can interrupt him. So over to David. David. Uh, David Pride, is, he's been a maker uh, for 10 years now, and he's currently in his final year um, doing a PhD at the Knowledge Media Institute at the Open University. And without more ado, I'll hand over to David. Hi, David. Hi, Richard. And for the first time, hello to everybody. And for the first time, I actually remember to unmute my microphone once we started. Um, if someone can give me some feedback, just to let you know when I switch the presentation, I'm working full screen here. I, I'm, I'm at home like most of us, so I don't have a second screen at the moment, so I won't be able to see what's going on, hence the reason for keeping the questions to the, to the end, really. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. I'm going to tell you a, a lot about the micro bit. We're going to crack on, but look, let, let me just switch to the screen. So you have to bear with me because it's only my second time using um, the Blackboard application, so we should now be able to switch to okay and for some reason it's not picking up so we'll do it this way no. sorry bear with me we found the first little here it's not letting me share my application screen um, okay this is card off if it helps David well, I'm actually looking at someone else's shared screen at the moment here we go Okay, does that help? Can we see that? Can everyone see that? Yes. Perfect, there we go. Okay, so we're, we're, this afternoon, obviously, we're talking about making with the micro bit. So just a, first, a little bit of, about me. Hi, I'm, I'm David. I'm David Pride. Um, I'm sort of, I'm one of the 8-bit generations, so I'm, I'm, I'm sort of older than most of the makers, you'll see. But um, I first got into making and hacking and tinkering um, pretty much about 10 years ago now, and I, I started tweaking around. Um, and then I, I was working for myself, but I was very comfortable, I was, I was very bored, I wanted to do something different, and then in 2012, this wonderful little wonderkin came out called the Raspberry Pi. Um, at that point, I did 
didn't know any Linux, I didn't know any Python, I knew very little about it. And to be honest, I played with it for a couple of weeks and then kind of went in the draw. Um, fast forward about six months and um, I went to National Museum of Computing here at Bletchley Park in Milton Keynes. And there was what they called a pipe jam, which is the Raspberry Jam logo you see there, which is where basically um, makers of all ages from literally six to 96 get together, make things, share Raspberry Pi ideas, but also microbit and Arduino stuff as well. And um, I went along, there was 40, 50 people there, and I thought I kind of missed a trick with this. So I started looking around online, and um, I ended up finding a Python course through Duke University. It was offered online and I took that and I loved it and, and got on really well with it. And it was only after that that I actually discovered that the the Python course I'd taken, which is the practical part, was their Python module from their bachelor's in computer science course. Which kind of surprised me that I was I was able to, to code at that level with, with only minimal experience. So but I kept going and I kept going for a few more years and after that that like led me to actually undertaking and I'd not done a degree. So that led me to undertake a master in computer science at the University of Hertfordshire in um, 2016. It was entirely based on the coding skills and making skills I'd learned through playing with the micro bit, through playing the Arduino one with the, the Raspberry Pi. So it's a case of like my making kind of genuinely changed my life because I came out of my master's and I wasn't sure what I really wanted to do next. I was determined I didn't want to do what I'd been doing before. And I found the uh, the um, an opportunity to study a PhD at the Knowledge Media Institute, which is part of the Open University based at Milton Keynes. Um, I'm in my final year. Um, I'm a PhD research student. I've been looking into um, citation data and natural language processing. Um, and a lot of the skills that I picked up during my making career have been directly transferable into what I now do on a day to day basis. Um, so. I'm constantly fascinated by why. I was mean, really annoying as a child. Um, always wanted to know why. Always wanted to dig into things. And this has become a lot more accessible in the last few years with the the the, the, the conception of these small devices like the Pi, like the micro bit, like the Arduino. The the micro bit actually sits neatly in the middle. Because Arduino, if you're here with Ollie yesterday, you'll see here you'll have heard him refer to it as a microcontroller. So it's not it's not a full computer, but you you can program it and you can make it do things that a computer does. But it, it's not a full computer. And at the other end, you've got a Raspberry Pi, which is a full computer. It's a, what's called an SBC, which is a single board computer. You can plug a monitor, a mouse, a keyboard, and away you go. It, it's a computer, but you can also unplug it and turn it into a standalone device as well. And the micro bit kind of sits neatly between the two of those. It's a lot more friendly to program than an Arduino. Um, it's not a full computer. You can't plug a screen and a keyboard into it, but you can plug it into your computer, which is how you program it, which is some of what we're going to look at um, shortly. Okay, so the microbit itself first came around really five years ago now, which seems like to have gone like that, so I'm sure that's part of my age as well. I mean, it was introduced, um, the BBC launched a Make It Digital campaign, which was part of one of these, and the, and the original plan, if you if you were around at the time, was to get to give one of these devices to every single school child um, in year six, in, in primary year six. And um, it was unveiled on, uh, in June 2015. Um, and there was um, debates and, and, and the machine was actually built and the spec was finalized. And it finally started shipping sort of spring, 20, spring to summer 2016. So they were a bit late, but they did. They got over a million of these devices into kids' hands. So if you or anyone you know, know someone who's now Five years old in year six, so they probably got one of these kicking around in their drawer somewhere. So, effectively, we're going to look at what what is a micro bit, what what what's it made of, what does it do, how do you program it? I mean, how do you get it to do what you want it to do? And there's different types of programming languages available, and we're going to look at a couple of those as well today. Um, and we're actually going to do a live coding demo. Eek! No, no, no pressure at all. And then we'll look at some more advanced stuff that you could do with the micro bit, which is how you can connect other things to it. And it's in connecting other things to it that the micro bit starts to become really powerful. And there's a whole array of devices and sensors that you can attach. You see the gold pins along the bottom. Those are your input ports and output ports. And you can connect stuff to those. 
and make the microbe interact with the outside world. And, and then towards the end, we're going to look at some examples of some projects because I know you're all itching and I hope you're all full of brilliant ideas for the projects that you now want to build. But I'm going to share with you a load of project examples and also some base sources for res resources for the micro bit so you can actually then start looking at doing this yourself. But even if you don't have a micro bit, by the end of this session today, you will be able to go off, you will be able to write code, and you'll be able to run it on a virtual micro bit that is available online. And we'll look at that as well. One thing I don't see how is my phone for a timer, so I'm not too sure how we're doing on time here. So, um, so if someone can keep me in check, <coughs> excuse me. So the micro bit itself, it's a nice, nice little board, so, so big. Um, I've got one here, but it's plugged into something that I'm gonna show you in a bit, so I'm not gonna pick it up at the moment. It's got a little screen, so to speak, that's made of 25 by five little matrix of LEDs. It's got two buttons, some push buttons is there. It's got Bluetooth and radio and a list of it's got an ARM processor, which is the same sort of chip that you'll find in most of your phones, okay? It's got 16K of RAM. That's random access memory. That's where you store stuff on your micro bit. It's got a three axis accelerometer. What that means, an accelerometer is same, again, you've got one of these in your phone, is it can mention, it can measure pitch, which is it tipping forwards and backwards, it can measure roll, which is side to side, it can measure yaw, which is a twisting motion, like this exact same as on an aircraft. So this, the micro bit actually knows where it is in space, and you can use this to do some really, really cool and useful things. It's got a compass in there as well, you can actually see that down the bottom left hand side of the board there, and it's actually got 25 GPIO ports, those are general purpose input and output ports and those are actually made from the little gold tabs that you see along the bottom edge of the micro bit those are actually wires that's how you can connect stuff to the micro bit. now look if that list is kind of scary and it's not really your bag don't worry about it too much because we're going to make it all a lot more simple and this session is really designed to be more practical as to how you can get started with this stuff and you don't need to know much to get started okay it's a nice little display. This is from microbit.org themselves. If you, if you go to microbit later, please. Um, and you can actually see what it's built up. You see on the left hand side, we've got the front, you've got your two buttons, your 25 LED lights, you've got a USB connector at the top. That's, how, that's actually how you plug it into the computer. That's how you, um, you can plug it into a USB port on any computer. It will show up as a device, and that's actually how you program the device itself. Flipping over to the back, you can see you've got down on the left hand side, you've got your processor. As I said, that's, that's an ARM processor. You may have heard this week they've actually been in the news because Apple have just announced they're actually going to be using ARM processors, not Intel processors, in the latest generation of MacBooks, which is quite a change. ARM is actually based in Cambridge. Um, it's probably the largest chip, chip licensor, I should say, they don't manufacture chips, they license them. And ARM processors are in literally billions of devices across the world. So it's, it's a very, very well used for format. And so you've got your compass there, accelerometer, which measures where it is, when you shake it, what position it's in. Um, and you also notice on the top right hand corner, you've got a battery socket. So you don't have to plug it into the PC to run it. You can actually take it away from the PC and it comes with just little, you know, little battery pack, costs about three pounds two AAA batteries in there and it can run for several hours on its own power source. So this means it can now actually run remotely. You can take it away, take it out into the field and do experiments with it. Like this one, for example. This is really, really simple. This is this is very, very simple to start with. And it's about four lines of code. And we can look at this shortly. So you see you've got the micro bit there. And dangling off the micro bit on the left hand side is that is the battery pack. And you've got what's called crocodile clips or alligator clips, if you've seen those, attached to two of the pin on the bottom. And those two cables, the other end of those cables, are literally just attached to two bits of metal. I think they were cut off bolts. You could use bolts, you can use nails, you can use anything that's either steel or silver or anything like that. Anything that conducts electricity. The thing about soil is soil actually conducts electricity. And the more moisture that's in the soil, better the electricity is conducted. So what this little setup here is doing is actually using the light on the front of the micro bit 
to actually indicate how moist the soil is. The more lights that are lit up, the more moist the soil is, and it doesn't need really watering. So really, really simple moisture monitor help keep your plants alive. Very simple, very straightforward. And this can be coded in the block code, which we're going to look at shortly, very quickly, and very simply. Now, again, don't worry if this list looks overwhelming to start with. There are several different programming languages that you can actually use to program your micro bit. Okay, and top left is Python. Um, it's a very, very powerful, well-known and well-used computer language. It's used in all sorts of industrial commercial applications. It's a fully featured programming language. There's nothing low level about it. As a slight aside, when putting this presentation together yesterday, I actually noticed for the very first time that the Python logo is two snakes. <laughs> and I've never seen that before. The next one along is what's called the make code. In, now, make code is sort of an interface, but it also has the make code blocks language. And we're going to spend quite a lot of time looking at this this afternoon, because this is really how you jump in very quickly and get going with the Raspberry Pi. You can write in JS, which is JavaScript. That's a, a scripting language largely used on the web. You can also write um, your, your micro bit programs in that. The bottom left one is one that's called, um, written by a chap called Nicholas Tolovey, um, is MicroPython. Now, MicroPython was specifically coded for the micro bit. So it's sort of a stripped down, lightweight version of Python and is designed to run very quickly and very small. So you can write very small, very powerful programs and run them on your micro bit. Now, Scratch, a lot of you may have heard of this very popular in primary schools, very popular method for introducing children to coding. And there is also a version of Scratch for the micro bit. It's quite similar to the um, make code section. Sorry, to the make code blocks toad, but it has a, a different range of, of, of functionalities. Now, see, so, so I mean, if any of this stuff that you're looking at at the moment, if you think it, it if, if you think it's too advanced for you, don't worry, because we'll start on a very simple level. And the same thing if you think if you've done some of this before and you think it's too basic for you, for you, do bear with us, and we'll see if we can show you something that's a bit more more advanced um, later on. So each one of these types of programming has what's called a development environment. And you might have heard this um, referred to as an IDE, which is an integrated development environment. And what this allows us to do, this is simply the program that allows us to write our program. And the one that you see on the screen in front of you is actually the micro bit make code interface that's um, provided by Microsoft. It's completely free, and we're going to look at this shortly. And this is the block-based version of the code. And as I said earlier, you can see on, on the left-hand side, you've got the picture of the micro bit. Well, that's not actually just a picture. That's actually a simulation of a micro bit. So the code that you write on the right-hand side of the screen will run immediately on the code, on the display, on the micro bit, on the left-hand side of the screen. Now, there's different development environments for different um, languages. Okay, for example, this one here, this is actually the MicroPython interface. This is quite different. This is available for Mac and Windows. You can download it, install it on, on your machine. It allows you to talk directly to the micro bit. You can write your Python code in the editor here, and then simply use this button here, which and you can't see because I'm not using the pointer, sorry, will allow you to flash the code written to the micro bit. And that's what you do is you write your code within one of these development environments, and then it's called flashing, actually, and it's you send your code, and it's compiled, and it's sent to the micro bit. And once the code's on the micro bit, that's it. it, it's there. You can unplug it, you can turn it off, you can unplug it, you can take it away. And when you plug it back in, the code will still be there and it will still do what you said it what you set it up to do. And this is why you can take it away. The moisture monitor you saw, it was programmed on, on my laptop here like this, we loaded the code into the micro bit, and now it just runs individually off its own um, battery pack.
you can't see me, I don't think, but I'm just taking a drink. Now, all of the options, I don't want to kid you here, all of these options are real programming. They're not fake or lightweight or not real or anything like that. And doesn't, it doesn't matter which one of these coding options you choose, each one of them uses central concepts, which is central in all computer languages. Now, the idea of inputs and outputs, you put something in or, or you push a button or you have a signal comes in and you do something with that input and you have outputs, which can be displays, it can be your LEDs, it can be noise, it can be sound, it can be light, all of these are inputs and outputs. And this is why, remember I said the pins along the bottom of the microbit are called your GPIO, general purpose input and output. Pin. So that's how it talks to the outside world and how it gets information from the outside world. Now, the next one, many of you will have heard of, but there may be some people in the audience who, who, who haven't, so I won't labour too long. There's variables. What does variable mean? A variable is something that can change. And the easiest way to think of a variable is it's simply a box or a bucket that you can put things into. You can put more things into the box. You can take things out of the box. You can take two boxes and you can compare the contents of two boxes. You can add the contents of two boxes together. Now, these boxes can contain anything. They can contain numbers of, of any sort. They can, contain, they can contain text. So they can contain now text in computer language is called strings. OK, I don't know why, actually. Look that one up afterwards. So you could put anything into these boxes, these variables. And then you can use these variables to do things with. OK, and we'll cover that in more detail. Logic. Logic isn't scary. I promise you. Go and look up a guy called George Bull. B-O-O-L-E. Fantastic, fantastic. guy. came up with something called Boolean logic. Logic in computer sense is actually really quite straightforward. The most simple version we'll be looking at this is if something happens, then do something else. So that's if, then. OK, so that's if something happens, do something else. And you can also have if something happens, do something. Otherwise, do something else. And this is called if something happens, then do this, else do this. And now that's a really nice, powerful example of computer logic. And you can do this with a micro bit. If I press a button, then do this particular sequence of operations, like the lights, play a sound. OK. And the last bit of real computing that you have within um, all of these options is this idea of loops. Now, loops are really powerful and fundamental to all computing. Because if you're programming a computer to do something, you don't want to program a computer to do something and then program it to do it again and then program to do it again. It's not efficient and it's not a good use of resources or time. So we have these things called loops and we're going to look at several different examples of loops and how they work. During the coding session, we're going to have a look at shortly. So all of these here, your input and your output, your variables, your logic and loops, you'll find these in every computer language everywhere. So what you learn on the micro bit is completely transferable to other programming languages and to furthering your programming skills. So you can start today very simply using the make code interface that we're going to have a look at shortly. Okay, and from there, you can use this as a springboard that you can then go on and learn more complex languages and you can learn more complex processes. So with that in mind, I'm actually daft enough, I think. Let's try some live coding. OK, so I'm going to stop sharing this window for a moment and I'm just going to move my chair a little bit so I'm a bit closer to my screen. Hopefully you can still see me. Is everyone okay out there? 
deathly silence. It's very weird presenting online because there's no feedback at all. <laughs> oh, we're Thank you, Tom. Brilliant stuff. Oh, and there's seven chat messages. Thank you. Okay, so people are obviously engaged. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, now let me just go. We're going to share another, share a different screen now. I'm just going to find the right window because there's quite a, quite a. I seem to be able to see everybody's screens for some reason. If you bear with me, please, just while I roll down this. Um, Can we help you with anything, David? If you bear with me just one second, I've got so many screens open here. I'm just trying to find the right screen to share. Can bear with me? Can someone just confirm that? That's an infinity of screens. And is that now the microphone? Are we good? Yep. Fantastic. Okay, so what you've actually got here, okay, this is the Microsoft uh, Microbit Make Code interface. Now, this again is also available to um, download as, as an independent platform. So it's, it's available on Windows. I'm not sure if it's available on Mac. Now, this is the online version. So literally, all you need is a web browser, your computer. So if you're here, you can you can do this. But hang around first. Um, just to point out, the, the online version, it works in Firefox, it works in Chrome. I'm genuinely not sure about um, Internet Explorer. I not, don't use Windows here. Uh, it doesn't work in Safari. It's got a lot of problems in Safari. So this is effectively the make code interface. And, and this is what you can use to actually start building things with your micro bits. OK, now, as I say, I'm going to take this from an absolute level because it, it's very difficult in a shared space and a shared audience to know what level people are at. So we're going to start at the very beginning and we're going to work quite quickly through quite a lot of concepts and quite a lot of levels because I want you at the end of today to be able to go away, use this interface and start making something. That's that's the whole point of the day. If we can get if we can get you making something by the end of this session, I've done my job as far as I'm concerned. So you can see here, so you've got your interface. So effectively, if I click on new project, we're going to start a new project. And the first thing we need to do is we need to give it a name. Now we'll give it a nice name and something we'll remember. And it's Friday. Yay! So I create my project. And this now takes us straight into the interface. Now, as I said, on the left hand side, you've got your picture of your micro bit. But this isn't just a picture. This is a full simulation. So you can actually write your programs on the right hand side of the screen. And on the left hand side of the screen, the code that you've written will immediately run on the micro bit. So you can check that it works. You don't even need a micro bit to start doing this. OK, so on the left is a micro bit. And in the middle, these are all of the commands that we can send to the micro that we can use to code the micro bit. OK. And on the right hand side, this is the space where we're actually going to use this to build our programs. OK, these two outer blocks that it's put here at the top, these are blocks. These outer blocks tell the program when to do something. There's a specific type of now you can see the one on start. That is when the micro bit starts up, when you power it up, when the program first runs, do anything in the middle. And the other one is quite simply forever. Keep doing whatever's in the middle. Now, we don't need those at the moment, but they're not going to affect our program because they don't actually do anything. So if we look now through some of these options here, you can see what we've got is, for example, this is an inner block. OK, now you can see it's designed to fit in the outer block. The outer blocks tell it when to do it and the inner blocks tell it what to do. Now, I said to you very briefly at the start is a string in computing terms is simply a piece of text. And for a few smiles for any geeks out there, a few of you I'm sure will know the program called Hello World is the first thing you're ever supposed to write on a computer just to prove that it's all working. Now you can see, so we've got our string here, but it's actually hashed out. It's not working at the moment. And that's because it doesn't know when to do it. So if we move our block and tell it when to do it, you see the micro bit grays out, 
when it reloads, we have just written our first microbit program. I'm not kidding you, that is it. That is all there is to writing programs in blocks. Okay, so, and that will go on forever. It will now just keep looping hello world. Now, obviously, that's not that interesting. Let's be honest. So let's do something else, okay? Now, in here, in the basic options, you can see you can show numbers, you can show LEDs, you can show icons, you can clear the screen. These are your times of when you want to do things. You can make it pause and you can show arrows. Now, we'll look at that in a bit more detail later, but not too much because we got a there's a lot to that. That's the compass area. Now, the next one down, if we look at the input, this is where it gets interesting, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. So, what I do, say, when button A is pressed, we want it to do something. We're going to delete this block for the moment because we don't need it, okay? What we're going to do is when button A is pressed, let's do something. So, basically, let's show an icon. And let's make the icon we show let's make it a happy face so now it goes gray and as soon as the color comes back to the micro bit you know your program is loaded and it's ready to run okay and so what this says here is on button a press that means when button a is pressed do what's in this block and what it's going to do is show the icon so i press the a button yay happy face we wrote another program which is great, but you can see that's kind of all the program does at the moment. It shows a smiley face when you press the button, but it doesn't do anything else. And once it's displayed that smiley face, there's, there's no other instructions to tell it to stop or to do something else. So the only thing you can really do at this point if you want to go back is to actually hit this here, which is the reset button. And that just effectively reboots your micro bit okay so and again you press a and there's a smiley face but that's all it can do so let's add a little bit more to this now okay and let's bring out another block here and we'll say on but when button ah oh can you see it's hashed out the reason it's hashed out is because button a is already being told to do something. When button A is pressed, do this week. So we can't, again, say when button A is pressed, do something else because you'll just confuse it. So let's just change this to B. And now we can use it. And now what we do when button B is pressed, let's show a different icon and let's show a grumpy face. Because let's be honest, you might not be feeling smiley face all the time. So we've now loaded our program. The program is loaded into the micro bit. And we can press A to show the world that we're happy. And we can press B to show the world that we're not having such a great day. Okay. Everybody with us so far. Really simple, really straightforward. You've just we've just written two programs in Microbit already. Okay, now what do I want to look at next is that so that's a little bit of the, the logic there, but let's let's actually bring in some more of the concepts that we talked about earlier. Okay, one of the things I want to look at here okay, is this concept of variables. Now, as I said, a variable is just a bucket. It's just a box to put something in. So we're going to make a variable, and the first thing we're going to do is going to ask you is you have to give your variable a name. Now, when you're naming your buckets or you're naming your variables, it's worth paying attention to the names that you're using, because in some computer languages, some names are already used functions and for, for things. Like, for example, you wouldn't want to call your variable name basic because it would clash with the function that's called basic there so make it something you can remember but try to make it not something that's going to be one of the control words okay in maths people tend to use x but if you get a lot of variables it gets quite difficult to remember what x is what y is what n is so i like to use words or names that mean something to me in this what we do let's call this one for example count OK, and we now have a variable and several options that we can do with it. OK, so. If we start off, start, we can set count to zero. And if we go here, we can show a number. Now, this number here is just a zero, OK, and, and, and a fixed number 
in computing is called a constant. That's just a zero, and it will never change. Okay. But if I go back to my variables, I can pick up my count variable, and I can drop it. And you see this little red dot appears. That means you can drop it in there. And now I want to show the number count. Again, it's not working. It's hashed out. If we drop it in here, we can do this. Let's move these blocks down. We'll delete this one. Wow. Okay, and it loads, and you can see straight away that the zero loads on the screen. But button A pressing still goes to a smiley face, which is a bit weird for a moment. So let's just reset that there. No, we don't want to do this, so let's take that block out. And what we'll actually do is go back to our variables, and when button A is pressed, let's change the count by one. That is add one to count. And then again, I'll show the number. In fact, I'll do it this way. Let me show you this way. We can actually take this one here. If I right click, I can duplicate the block and then just grab it there. Wait for the micro point to reboot. And away we go. We've actually just written a people counter. And the number of times I press the button, we now start to count up. You saw me then actually use the right click to duplicate a block. You don't have to just duplicate one block, you can actually delete, duplicate multiple blocks. So if I tag and I duplicate the whole block, and as we saw previously, it's hashed out because button A is already doing something. So we change it to button B. We don't want to do it the same thing, so let's make it minus one. I love it so quickly. There we go, and our, 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 our micro bit is ready, and we can now count people into our event, and we can count people out of our event. Okay, so that's just a real simple example there of how an input can change the value of a variable and also then display the value of that variable on a screen. So, I mean, the buttons are really cool. You've got two buttons, you can make them do anything. You can do things, you can put timing sequences in. You can make a race game between two people. Who can be quickest to press the button? Because it can display A or B on the screen, and then whichever comes up first, that person was, was obviously the winner. But the buttons aren't the only way you can actually talk to your micro bit. There are so many other sensors and devices that you can use for this thing. For example, if we look here, okay, if we bring this one up, okay, this is on shake. Now, shake is one of the built in interactions that the, the, um, the micro bit using the accelerometer can detect. And you've got shake, whether the logo is up, logo down, screen up, whether you dropped it. And this, this grams. Like, so sorry, G, this is the acceleration force. How fast is it moving and then stopping? So you can use all of these to determine something. So for example, let's do, let's take these blocks. Okay. And now on shake, change the count by one. And you'll see this little shake button here comes up. And you can also, look, you can actually shake it. It's not very responsive, to be honest, and just in case. You can hit your shake button. That's every time the micro bit is shaken, it adds up by one. So if you strapped, uh, attached it to your battery pack and attached it to a shoe, you've got a pedometer. You've got something to count the number of steps that you're working, that, you, that you've walked. Okay, and there is a huge range of inputs in here. On pin naught, these are the pins along the button. Okay, so when these two pins are connected together, do something. If the acceleration equals this, that you can monitor the light level, you can monitor the direction it's pointing, the temperature outside. We all know it's a bit flipping warm right now. Okay, and if you look at more, you can measure the rotation, you can measure is it near any magnets, how long has it been running. So there is a huge range of sensors that you can add to your device to allow you to build your programs okay so that's just a really really quick 
overview of how you get started with programming. There are a myriad resources online that can tell you how to write programs, how to, how to code, how to use this, this make blocks interface. And this is this is real coding here. Okay, I mean, if I take all of these, find some of these now, let me just show you one minute. Let's take these away so they're not confusing anything. And the one thing about the, the great thing about the make code interface here, okay, as you can actually see here, it can write in several of the languages. So here's our program at the moment. And there's our program written in Python. Okay, so again, this is where we're setting our variable to zero. And you see basic and the, the, um, the method is show number and the number it's going to show is count. So it's doing exactly the same as what you're doing in the blocks code but it's actually written in Python. And the really cool thing about this, if you actually go back to these instructions now, you see now the instructions are now in Python, but this is all drag and droppable. So you don't need to know the Python to start. You can learn in blocks which of the blocks perform which of the actions. And then when you're comfortable with blocks, you can start to move to Python and start building more complicated programs using full Python. And what you're doing here is coding. It's absolute real computer programming, as you'd exactly as you'd find any programmer or any developer doing. Okay? So this is real. This is this this is good stuff. You, and, and, and you should feel pleased if you can get this to do something. What do I actually do is see if we can give you um, some ideas okay so hopefully ah that's the wrong button my apologies <laughs> bear with me one second caller as they say so hopefully you can now all see the presentation again can i just have one yes from somebody thank you so Essentially, I couldn't come to a session like this today, really, and not make something. Okay. Now it's a real shame. Obviously, due to current circumstances, we're all we're all spread out. We're all we're, we're all stuck in our own place, and we're all trying to do something. Now, if we were doing this session together, when we usually run this sort of session, we'd actually get you folks all hands on and and actually making something. Obviously, today we couldn't do that, but I wanted to do something that we could do how quickly. That you can actually get going and make something really fun with something like this so here in 60 seconds or less is a quick microbit project effectively take a cardboard box chop the side off it get my wife's ukulele and draw around it carefully chop a bit out and you've got your ukulele shape take a ruler four pieces of tin foil a pencil and some glue mark out nice equidistant strips on your um what's it called the neck that's right on the neck use your print stick sorry other glue brands are available use your sticky stuff to attach your foil strips to the top of the neck of your cardboard ukulele glue it all into place and there we go and as your basic shape that's literally cardboard and tin foil okay well then indeed if you don't have these around you can you can get these easy on these are what's called either crocodile clips or alligator clips um and they're just a little look like little pegs and you can clip things on they're really strong don't get your fingers in the way and just attach four of those to the metal strips that you just made at the top of the ukulele you want another little silver dot down there um for the bottom of the ukulele and decorate to suit and what this actually does is don't be scared by the next one when you connect all of those wires up to your micro bit and you connect another two wires to your speaker i think you know where we're going with this so i stop sharing my screen and hopefully you can all see my camera now and i'm just waiting for i'm just going to turn my amp on it's not really an amp let's be honest Let me just turn this down slightly. 
and in true classic, for those of you who know what it was, Blue Peter fashion, as they say, is one we made earlier. So this is my card. It's not really a ukulele. But I showed it to my nephew last night, and he said, that's not a ukulele, that's a piano. Right? He's got a point. So effectively, you see this pad here is where you put a finger, and this actually, you then become the circuit between this circuit and the others. And I'm not going to play a painful tune because I'm not a musician, but just a... Now, I've got four notes here, which is just four wires. Now, you've actually got many, many more ports on the Arduino that you can use. This is just using four of them. And this connects. There we go. OK, so that is a cardboard ukulele made really simply from a piece of cardboard and four strips of foil. And what I'll actually do is, as you saw in the picture, and say it might look a little scary to start with, but I promise you it's not. So I've got my micro bit down here, and I've got the wires that go to the ukulele are attached to the other micro bit here. And that's just me shorting it out. And I've got the battery pack just here. So this means it's now completely portable. I'm getting a little static here, so I'm just going to turn that off. So not only live coding, live demonstration as well. If I just go back to my screen here. Yeah. So really simple, didn't take too long to put about. The wiring's not scary, to be honest at all. Um, it's very straightforward. If you use crocodile clips, you, you can pin it together. The little board that you can see the micro bit plugged into is what's simply called an expansion board. It costs about four or five pounds. You plug it into, and what that allows you to do, that allows you to access all of the pins on the bottom of the micro bit in a really, really easy and straightforward way. That's the one on the top left, which is the just the standard expansion board. And you can see that the two rows of pins is what you can then attach. You need some jumper cables and, and your crocodile clips, but you can then attach anything to it. And here's a few examples of some of the other things that are currently available for, for the micro bit. And this is where the, 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 the Saras project, the environmental thing, um, comes in. Because you see the, the middle one on the top is what's called a weather bit. Um, so again, not too expensive. Excuse me, and you can attach um, a rain gauge, a wind speed, a anemometer, is that the right word, I think? And actually build your own weather station out of it. Um, you don't need a separate speaker, the one on the, on the right, you can have a little speaker for the micro bit. Bottom one on the left is another sort of environmental sensor, does pressure changes, air humidity. You can even get air quality sensors for this little device. Um, bottom middle is what's called an automation hat. That gives you the ability to switch stuff on and off. So you can use the micro bit to sense what's happening in the environment and then change something. For example, you saw the moisture monitor earlier. Um, in that case, you could use one of these hats. You can check if your plant needs watering and then use the automation to turn on a pump to water the plants. You save water, your plants don't die, and everybody's happy. And the last one on the bottom left is what's called the Inventor's Kit by Kitronic. This is not a sponsored post. There are lots of these Inventor's Kits out there. This is the one I found on, on the website this morning. Okay, so with that in mind, there are hundreds and hundreds of products out there from the really, really very simple, some of the ones we've seen this earlier, right the way through to some um, really complex things. And it's, it's taking the micro bit and co combining it with some really quite simple code, you can make some awesome things. There is so much we haven't had time to touch in this presentation. For example, the micro bit actually comes with a radio and Bluetooth. They, these things can talk to each other. So they can send data from one micro bit to another. You want, hang on, well, how does that work? And well, it's, it's very straightforward. You, you can actually do some really powerful things with this. Um, for example, there was a project that was, was, uh, looked, was suggested was looked at illegal tree felling. We take a bunch of micro bits and strap them to a tree, and then if a tree is cut down, the, 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 the movement sensors in the micro bit will know that tree has been cut down, and it can send that data back to a base station micro bit, and you know if people are cutting down trees when they shouldn't be. Again. There are a, a myriad resources, and if we're, when we're having a chat about this in the middle as we're, as we're rolling through, I'll dump some of these links into the chat 
Um, and thank you to everybody for coming along. I know it's a really sticky, hot afternoon and we're all stuck inside, but hopefully that's given you a little bit more inspiration, a few ideas about the kind of thing that you can do with your micro bit. And I have to say here, I'll be completely honest, I'm not an expert. I'm genuinely not an expert. Thanks for the intro, Richard, but I'm not. I'll, I'll be able to answer, hopefully, some of the questions you'll have out of this session. I won't be able to answer all of them, but the great thing about this is, because this was funded by the BBC Start, it came with a huge resource push. So it's supported by the BBC, it's supported by Microsoft. There are many, many resources out there for learning how to code it, ideas for building projects, and for taking something forward that you can make and you can get a whole lot of fun out of. And with that, I think it's probably about time to wrap up here. I don't know how we're doing for time. Thanks everybody so much. And I can hear questions, I suspect, now beeping away. So I'll stop sharing and I'll come back to my camera. And I'm Jason Brick. There's so yeah. some pretty sweet messages. Sorry, loads of people saying what an amazing session that was. Thanks so much. I must say, I learned an incredible amount in that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, if anyone would like to ask David anything, would you like to just do it through the chat now? And, and David will try and answer all the questions. Or, or if you'd like to discuss any ideas you've got for the channel, I'm sure he'd be available. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. What I'll do while I'm doing that, if you want to type the questions, what I'll do is here. I'm just sticking into the chat channel here now. This is the link to the um, microbits um, interface that you just saw me using. There. This is completely free. It's available online. If you join this session, you can go and use it literally right now. Um, I've just seen a question from Robert and Aaron. Are there a lot of sensors? There, there, there's quite a few out there. You can get, I mean, built into the micro bit itself. It's got uh, temperature, the, the compass, as we said, the, um, it's got heat, light, accelerometer, and compass. And that's all built into the micro bit. Then what you can get to add on to that is, um, as I say, there's the weather station type applications. You can get CO2 monitoring stations. You can get air quality monitors. You can get wind speed monitors, water quality monitors. Um, yeah, have a look. There's a, two good sites for this. Again, not sponsored. Either Pi Maroni um, or the Pi Hut. They both have Pi in the name, but they're very good for microbit as well. What was the foil disc on the ukulele's body for? If I can I'll hold up again, it's actually turned off now. But see, what you're actually doing here is see, is what you're doing is is this is what's called the ground, which is the negative pin, and these are effectively the positive pins of an electrical circuit. So when I touch one finger on here, and I touch another finger on one of these other pins, I'm actually completing the circuit. I'm being the the bridge i'm actually the wire in this circuit and this will actually complete the circuit between the ground and the positive pins and each one of the positive pins will play one of the notes and obviously you've got space here you can add many many more notes on the top all oh, right that's that's really good to hear and genuinely that, that that's the way it should be coding coding with python there are there are lots of python courses online there's 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 a chap you'll find him on um on, on twitter a lot called al swigart um he's got one very famous python book called Aut automate the boring stuff but he also does a range of introductory python books um that can get you started right from the ground up and literally that's that's where i start. that's where i started but i i really do like where the blocks and the Python code overlaps. And you can actually, you can use the, the blocks code to learn Python. Is there an emulator for a smartphone? I genuinely don't know the answer to that one, sorry. And Robert and Aaron, wow, there are so many. Yes, there are indeed, there are an auto. Uh, what voltage are the GPIO pins? They are 3V3, I believe. I, let me just check that. Um, they're either 3V or 3V3, they're three volts. OK, someone, I believe someone asked um, the the learning Python author was I'm just typing it in because it's quite an odd name is a chap called Al Swigart. And someone I, I saw a question straw by someone just actually asked, what's the difference between an Arduino and a, um, and a, a, a micro bit? An Arduino uses a, a, a different chip. 
um, stuff, but it's, it's, all, it's, it's more what's called a microprocessor in the fact that you load your code into it. It's the same way you do it in the, the micro bit. The focus of the micro bit is programming in the Arduino is the language is something called processing, which is a flavor of C or C sharp, I think, which is quite a heavy computer language. It's not really a comfortable place to start if you've never looked at coding before. Whereas with the micro bit, because you have block code and Python and micro Python, I think it, ma it makes for a much, much easier jumping off point to get into stuff like this in the first place. Oh, and there's, thank you for that, Michael. That's brilliant. And so then we've got. Um, oh, thank you. Thanks for that, Michael. That's brilliant. I mean, if you check the microbit.org site, there's also the Make Code site as well for links to resources and, and, and projects ideas and stuff like that and I'm sure you're all now going to get some fantastic ideas as I said unfortunately I can't I, I'm not here on Monday but I'll be back on Wednesday get your ideas together have some thoughts see what you can come up with if you want any more help or input we'll be as I say we'll be back here next Wednesday and um, thanks every, genuinely thank you so much to everybody for coming along it's, it's really nice to see an engaged enthusiastic audience even if the situation is not quite what we want it to be And with that, I think I shall, with a minute to go, I shall hand, hand you back over to Richard. Thanks, Linda. Very nice. <laughs> that was superb, David. Thanks so much. That really was. I think we'll all remember the ukulele forever. That was amazing. <laughs> Michael's a bit of a guitarist. It's a shame he can't remotely access it um, from where he is um, up, up in Sheffield. I'm going to switch instruments. That's going to be my new passion. There we go. <laughs> a micro bit ukulele. I think you might want a few more than four notes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, all he needs four notes. Just play them in the right order. Yes, it's, uh, the four, it's the four chord song, isn't it? Yes. Can we get Noah to play the ukulele? <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. I'm so glad everybody enjoyed it. That's a that's a really fantastic session. That's really good. Very, very uh, That's really great. So, so I, I know David's got to kind of dash off. So a, anything else that anyone um, apart from apart from saying kind of thanks and how brilliant that was, which it was. Has anyone got anything else quickly um, they'd like to know from David? <coughs> No, as David says that he'll be so he'll be one of us back on Wednesday um, for the community discussion. And um, please do. We'll, we'll have a few makers there. We'll have David doing micro bit. Um, Ollie's going to be there um, about Arduino's, and, and and Tanya's going to be there as well. Just generally about how to kind of um, how to kind of think about and set up your make. So um, David, thanks so much. That was absolutely brilliant. We really really enjoyed that. Thank you very much. Thanks everybody so much, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, dude. Fantastic. Thanks very much, everybody. So th thanks, everyone. And, and, and just to say again, many apologies about um, Monday, um, but the sessions had to be cancelled. It is going to be open. Um, um, uh, otherwise, uh, we've also uh, made a Slack channel uh, where you can talk and, and people like David will be able to pop into the Slack channel every now and again uh, if you've got something you really want to know in there. So I think Michael's going to put details um, of how to get uh, into the Slack channel. I just channel. posted that now, Richard. Thank you. So anybody wants to follow that link, uh, I've never done it like this before, so uh, apologies if this is problems. But if you follow that link I just posted in the chat, that should join you up to um, the that join you up to our Slack channel. It'll put you into a couple different our Slack workspace. Sorry, it'll put you in a couple different channels where you can have a conversation. Everybody carry on. And like Richard said, some of the pros and experts who are coming in doing the sessions this week will be dropping in to answer your questions. So.
That'd be brilliant. So uh, have a great weekend, everyone. So so basically, uh, we'll, we'll be here for another couple of minutes if, if we can help you at all with anything. Uh, so the Monday session, there, there won't be Eleanor and the teams in the NAI uh, team, uh, but we'll have the we'll have it open anyway. This blackboard, and uh, we'll be there. And um, please do go to the Slack channel, and and you can discuss um, anything there. The next actual masterclass is Ollie back on Tuesday uh, with another Arduino masterclass, which I know he's really looking forward to, and he really enjoyed uh, doing his session yesterday. Uh, so he's really looking forward to that, and, and I think we all are. And then on Wednesday, uh, we have the community discussion. So thanks a lot. Uh, thanks, Patricia. Sorry, kind of you. It was, wasn't it? David was absolutely excellent, I thought. I really did. <laughs>